Mzansi National Police Commissioner Fani Masimula and Police Minister Begi Kele were among the many cops present in Cape Town Court when alleged 28's gang boss Ralph Stanfield, his wife Nicole Johnson and two others appeared there on various charges. Hey, hey Mzansi, hello and welcome to Entertainment News Mzansi. If you're new to my channel, you know you have the story, go ahead, click the subscribe button and of course the bell and you'll never miss an update. Now, Mzansi, all this also reflects rather poorly on the city of Cape Town, which uh, has been involved in business with Johnson. Stanfield and Johnson were detained in their home in the upmarket Cape Town suburb of Constantia on Friday, 29 September 2023. Now, they appeared in the Cape Town Magistrate Court on Monday, 2 October, along with two other accused, Dan Verbuizen and Johannes Abrahams. Buizen and Abrahams were arrested in the day after Stanfield and Johnson were taken into custody they are trying to be released from state custody on bail but it is expected they will be kept behind bars at least until their next court appearance on 9 october 2023 together the group faces charges including motor vehicle theft assault robbery and fraud stanfield also faces an illegal firearms possession charge national police commissioner fanima simula and police minister begi kele who arrived with eight police officers as apparent security sat in the courtroom watching the four as they made their way into the duok. Nakdala later on Monday 2 October planned to visit the families of police officers murdered in Cape Town. There were several more police officers stationed outside the court building during court proceedings which photographers were not allowed to capture. The legal representative for the accused Ross McKinnon said Stanfield had no previous convictions. There are no pending warrants of arrest. He was given 50 thousand rand bail in 2014 and he has been appearing in and out of court for 29 months since 2017 until now now as for johnson his wife uh, mckinnon said she also had no previous convictions and like stanfield was also once detained in a 2014 case mckinnon said johnson was recently admitted to a cape town hospital and was discharged a day before her arrest without detailing her health issues he said she was recovering covering and together with the fact she was she was the mother of two children aged 15 and 17 years old her condition needed to be taken into account now, johnson was remanded for to the hospital section of paulsmore prison mckinnon said that uh, buizen handed himself over to the police on saturday 30 september 2023 he added that abrams has no previous conviction and he is also on warning pending the current matter now let's throw back to the firm Coincidentally, Janice Abrahams was the name of a bodyguard to Stanfield's uncle, Colin Stanfield. Now, Stanfield, who died in 2004, headed up the gang conglomerate, the firm, which has a strong 28 membership, allegedly. Now, Johannes Abrahams and Colin Stanfield together once faced a murder charge relating to a killing that happened in the Cape Town suburb of Valala in 1995. Now, parts of Valala are known as strongholds of the 28 gang. Earlier this year, Daily Maverick reported that Stanfield's name cropped up in an investigation relating to Malusi Boy, who in March was fired from the post of mayoral committee member for human settlements after his city of cape town office was raided as part of fraud and corruption investigation now daily maverick also recently also reported that the city of cape town was doing business with glomix house brokers this is where valala park again crops up glomix whose director is johnson is building 204 houses in valala park in a project expected to conclude next year now this now means the city of cape town is reliant on a company glomix linked to an accused johnson who faces charges in two different court cases the second case johnson is an accused it relates to gun licenses and involves stanfield and others now all four accused who have now reunited via criminal charges who appeared together in court on monday on their names at least have previously been re referenced in another case relating to allegations of fraudulent firearms and police corruption that case stems from 2014 and was likely what mckinnon was referring to when he said stanfield and johnson faced legal issues stemming from then in that case it was alleged that police officers had 
had fraudulently created firearm licenses for suspects, including Stanfield and others, who did not follow the legal procedures entitling them to such documents. The provisional charge sheet in that matter lists 23 accused, including Stanfield, Johnson, Abrams and Boysen. The case is based on allegations that three new for now former police officers, of course, linked to the Central Firearms Registry, Priscilla Mangiani, Billy April and Mary Cartwright, handed gun licenses to Stanfield and others who had no legal right to such paperwork. It is expected to resume in Kailicha Priority Crimes Court in December. Now, meanwhile, Mzansi, the name Johannes Abrahams has previously surfaced in a third case. In that case, one, Johannes Abrahams, it was not immediately clear if it is the same one who appeared in court with Stanfield on Monday, was reportedly among those arrested in, in connection with an arms cache discovered in Valala Park in October in 2006. Now, Mzansi, at the time, the South African Police Service had said over 250 firearms, ammunition and an undisclosed amount of cash have already been seized and are being processed. Four individuals have been arrested. We are confident that this cash will assist us in uh, clamping down uh, the scourge of uh, gangsterism and in reducing the stubborn contact crime trends which affect our community, such as murder and vehicle hijacking. It is not clear what came of that case. Now, a yep yep and the dodgy dealing allegations. Stanfield and Johnson recently faced other problems. Now, this publication reported extensively on that saga that revolved around involving the a yep yep lifestyle lounge in Cape Town, a venue located in Clough Street in the city. Now, it is said in June 2023, its former co owner, Kakiso Tsedza, launched a criminal complaint with police about a yep yep Cape Town as he alleged Stanfield involved in providing it with security and Johnson, its general manager, were trying to dominate. It. The venue closed in August as Zetsa's allegations ramped up. Now, it also reopened again late in September when legal settlement saw Zetsa sell his one-third of shares in the business. The deal resulted in half the business belonging to a Yip Yip co-founder Opa Sifoka's family, who obviously is DJ Sambari. Sifoka, also known as DJ Sambari, was murdered in Johannesburg in November 2022. The other half is owned by Johnson's mother and Stanfield's mother-in-law, Barbara Johnson. Yikes, uh, Mzansi. Now, this man has just been implicated. I mean, you know, uh, every, you know, every everyone has his day. Every dog has his day. What comes up must come, do must come down. And apparently, allegedly, you know, Mr. BC went on to Cape Town and, uh, you know, went and sat in court and apparently, allegedly, the cops and the big guns have uh, flown down to Cape Town and gathered there to try and make sure that uh, this man and uh, his dodgy dealings uh, remain in cast until all obviously all um you know um investigations have been completed and they are trying to pin him he is appearing on the 9th of october and there we will see if he indeed gets a, a bail for all these crimes that i've just mentioned yikes leave your thoughts and zanzi in the comment section you know i love to hear from you but for now you know i will bring you the updates hot just the way you like it